Hello, welcome to Nia's Perspectives and welcome to the free home buying guide video series. Uh, my name is Nia. I am the owner of Perspectives. This is my YouTube channel, Nia's Perspectives. And um, along my real estate investing journey, I found that different individuals have a lot of questions about the home buying process. I myself have shared my real estate investing journey step by step in my group, the Gold Diggers community. You can find the link down below if you are interested in joining. But I created this because a lot of my followers and students had a lot of questions about the home buying process and just different ways. And I find that usually we normally, you know, work to prepare our credit and we, we focus on getting our credit ready, but we ignore a lot of the other parts of the home buying process. And those parts are just as important um, to not only purchase the home, but my goal is to help you stay in the home after you purchase it, okay? So we're gonna talk about building teams. So along your real estate journey, first of all, I wanna say that real estate itself is a relationship game, okay? Building relationships is a big part of real estate and it is something that you will absolutely need along your journey, okay? So we're going to talk today about the different members of your team. Now your team could have all these members. It could possibly not have all these members. Um, that's based upon you. But these are some of the people that will be your A team. These people, you want people in these positions that will have your back, who are very knowledgeable about the process and about their role in the process. You want to do research and learn about their roles in the process so that you can be better aware of what type of services they have to provide to you. You can also pose that question to them. Okay, what all does this process entail? You know, what do you do? What do I do? What is your role in this process? Because you want to be more knowledgeable. Um, I asked the question to first time home buyers to ask them, you know, what are some of the things that they wish they would have known? So with all of that, I wanted to create this guide for you. So welcome. Um, this is the first step. Um, congratulations first on making a decision that you want to purchase a home. And also congratulations for allowing me to be part of that process. Um, I hope that this free home buying video series and the guide that goes along with it. Now, if you just found this video and you don't have the guide, make sure you check that link below and wait. Hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. <laughs> okay, so building your team. So there are some key players, your MVP, the real MVPs that you're going to need throughout your real estate journey. First and foremost, and not necessarily in any type of order, let me just say that these are just people that you will need, a real estate agent. You will need a real estate agent. Uh, some people do go through the process and they don't necessarily use an agent, um, but I generally wouldn't recommend that unless you're knowledgeable about the process. Um, real estate agent will help you find your forever home. They will talk to you, like basically, when you first meet them, you want to discuss what your goals are. What are you buying the property for? What does what need does this property you are purchasing need to fill? Are you looking for a home for you and your family? They want they need to know how many people will be in the home, things like that, so that they can look and their search is determined by what your goals are in your home buying search. So you want to meet with them to kind of let them know what kind of houses you like, what kind of designs and things like that. And you all can have a real heart to heart discuss and they can let you know how realistic your wants are with your situation. Um, so you let them know what your priorities are in your home buying process. And then the agent will basically kind of weigh out your desires with whatever the current trends are in the market. Um, which brings me to my next point. You want to make sure you have somebody who's knowledgeable about the market, about um, prices, uh, the neighborhoods, market trends, uh, things like that. You want somebody who is knowledgeable about those things because they will help you throughout your process and educate you as you go along. A great realtor, you normally walk away learning something like, oh, 
I didn't know that because it's so many different parts to this process, it can become overwhelming. So that's another reason why I wanted to create this guide. So I say it's a good practice to make a list of your wants and your needs. What are the things that you must have in your new home? And what are the things that it's like, mm, if I have this, it'd be really nice, but it's not really mandatory. So you want to have those type of lists, okay? So if you're an investor and you're looking to become a real estate investor, you want to make sure that your realtor is investor friendly because all realtors are not investor friendly. Um, some realtors, they prefer, you know, home buyers who plan to live in the property and they're not really investor friendly. They want you to make those big purchases. Whereas a real, real, real estate investor, you might not make humongous purchases all the time, but you make more purchases when a person who is purchasing their forever home a home mortgage is 30 years. So generally that person is not going to be purchasing a home again in the next five to 10 years. Whereas to you as an investor might purchase five to 10 homes in those five to 10 years. So these are the things that you want to consider. Okay. Um, Based on things that your realtor would do, they're going to search for the homes and they'll show you properties for you to look at and determine if you want to tour these homes. Uh, they'll negotiate on your behalf uh, throughout the process with the seller. Um, basically, throughout the process, you want to make sure that you don't feel rushed. You don't want your realtor to rush you or pressure you. Um, your realtor is basically your personal advocate. Okay, they're a personal advocate and what they do throughout the process is work hard to help you achieve your goals. Okay, so you want to, this is an important person in your process. Next person I want to talk about is the home inspector. The home inspector comes into play after an offer has been accepted on the property. So you've been searching with your realtor, you find a home um, that you like, you put an offer in on it. The seller accepts your offer and is willing to sell you the property for the price that you offered. And bam, you want to do your due diligence. As a part of your due diligence, you want to have a home inspector search the property. Now, this might be an old just-in-case type situation, but you rather have an idea of what you're getting into. Know a home inspector is not a catch-all. They may not catch everything. They are not an expert in every part of the house. It's a general inspection. So if you have something that you think is more, like you think you see mold or you think you see asbestos or things like that, you want to purchase those specific inspections as well. You are open to be able to do those things. And your home inspector, you can ask them. They can do a mold, on, a mold and radon test. Like, so there are other parts. If you see something in the home that alerts you that it might be pest, you want to look for pests. Things like that you want to pay attention to, okay? Your inspector is going to go on your roof. They'll go in your crawl space. They're going to do a good survey of the basement. I personally prefer inspectors who provide pictures along with their inspection report simply because it makes it easier if you have a repair that you want to go back and ask the seller to fix it's much easier to identify what it is that you're saying you want to fix because you can just reference that number on the inspection report sounds fair enough all right um the inspection report it goes back to you um, but what you can use this for, you can use the inspection report to ask the seller to make repairs on the home. You can ask for credits at closing. You can ask to lower the purchase price. Or you can use the inspection report to simply back out of the deal, which I myself have done before. I have used the inspection to back out of a deal and then end up getting my earnest money back because the, the, the home failed inspection. It was horrible. The, you know, it was no way that... Um, it had been well taken care of and it literally I would have been walking into a headache. So that's a deal that I did have to back out of. So these are the benefits of getting a home inspection. All right. So another person that is an important member on your team, your MVP, is your loan officer slash lender. Your loan officer or lender can make or break your transaction. Okay. I could tell you some stories. So in the beginning of the process, when you're thinking about purchasing a home, you want to seek a professional, a loan officer, a lender, maybe a mortgage broker, and have them run your stuff and submit your documents so you can see where you're at. At that point, they will give you an action plan. And what I mean by give you an action plan, they'll tell you, oh, your credit is not high enough. You need to have your score at least at this amount. You need to have this amount of money in reserves. You need to lower these 
uh, debts or pay down these credit cards before we will pre-approve you for a loan. They'll give you things like that. And that's why I call it a game plan. It's a real life, good idea to do that earlier in the process so that you can be working on those things. So when you approach again, then bam, you're ready. Okay. So make sure that your loan officer is responsive because if your loan officer is not responsive, it will make your whole process like that. And if they're unresponsive in the beginning of the transaction up in the pre-approval process, let me tell you, they're going to be unresponsive throughout the rest of the process. My loan officer from our most recent purchase was the worst. You hear me? He did not submit documents that I sent to him. And he was like that from the beginning. I should have followed my first mind and I should have let him go and went somewhere else. Because once you get your finances together and ready, you'll approach the loan officer or the mortgage broker and you'll get your pre-approval or pre-qualified. Once your credit is up to date, your debt to income ratio, which means the amount of debt you have versus the amount of income you're bringing in, those numbers look good. You have reserves, you have things like that. You have assets that you can actually claim. Then you'll get a pre-approval or pre-qualification letter. Okay, once you get that, there's no obligation that you have to work with that mortgage company because they gave you a pre-approval. You have the ability to go work with other. You are not obligated to work with them. You sign an agreement that say that you intend to get you intend to get your loan from them. So that's an important part that a lot of people might not know. Also, you want your loan officer be, to be responsive because let's just say you get approved for $400,000 and this home is two fifty. dollars Are you going to send them the fact that you got pre-approved for $400,000? No, you're not. You're going to get an adjusted letter or your realtor will redact the amount that you got pre-approved for just so they know that you are pre-approved for enough to purchase their property. It's important because if I know that you got pre-approved for 4000 I might not accept that low amount from you. I might want you to pay a higher rate because I know you can get more. So if you can get more money, I want more money. Okay? So it's important for you to know to be proactive about your file. Be proactive about everything. When you're dealing with your lender and going through the underwriting process, which the underwriting process comes after you've got the inspection, you and the seller have agreed, okay, yes, I'm still going to purchase this property, bam. Now you go through the underwriting process. They will be requesting everything but your next child. And when they request it, it's important for you to reply quickly and you to respond quickly and provide the documents they're looking for. The longer you take, the longer your file will take to get to closing, okay? And I'm going to come out with another video that's going to be a I think it's like the 15 things while you're purchasing the home and like telling you about certain things not to do while you're going through the home buying process that relates to your lender. I don't want to make this video too long, so we're not going to get into that. But don't be afraid to be proactive with your file. During my last most recent, yes, I'm talking about this same loan officer. He he, he was the worst. Um, basically, when it came down to me getting my conditional approval, which you was like your approval before closing, but you have to submit documentation to prove you have enough money to close and get your year's worth of homeowner insurance purchased and paid for to submit those receipts, things like that. Um, the cancel check from your earnest money, all of those things like that you have to submit before the final approval. Well, he said that I needed to submit them. I submitted them to him and then tell me why I got a request from the underwriting department a week later for the same documents that I just submitted to him a week ago, which means that he didn't do anything during that week, didn't submit anything, which means my file stayed there for that week, which means I had to file another extension to extend my closing date in hope and pray that my seller agreed to it because he had every ability to walk away, even though extensions happen all the time. But y'all, I need a whole video to talk about the things that this person did. Okay, moving right along. So that's an important person in your process. Next, you want to deal with your insurance agent. Shop around. Look for an insurance agent because you will need to provide the receipt from you purchasing your first year of home insurance so that the property is per the property is insured for the first year, especially if you're using escrow because 
escrow is going to start collecting money so that when the bill comes out next year, you have enough money sitting to pay the bill off total. So you need to have that first year already paid for. The insurance agent comes in after the home inspection because you're just going to need to send that receipt in. Many lenders will not close unless you can submit the receipt that you've paid for that first year of home insurance. And you want to make sure you get insurance coverage that you need um, for what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few bonus tips because this is getting long enough. Uh, one I want to say is do shorter contracts. Um, and then if you like the service that, that they are providing, you can always extend it if needed. But don't lock yourself into a long contract with a realtor and you find out that you're not a good mesh and you don't mesh well. Now you're stuck with this person and you signed a contract with them because no other realtor can work with you if you have that realtor well, you, that realtor has you under contract, okay? Then shop around for all. Nobody says that you have to go with this specific vendor, um, this specific person, and just because they're your friend does not mean they need to be your realtor, okay? You can pick somebody that has your best interest at heart. You want to pick somebody based on the experience and is a good match for your goals. This is a huge person. And it's an overwhelming process, and it will be a lot that you will go through in this process. If you're not confident that you feel like this person will represent you and represent your best interests, don't do it, sis. Don't do it. Take your time. See their work. Follow them on social media. See how they are with other customers. See if their customers and previous customers would recommend them and what their previous customers said to them. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, you don't want to be overzealous about the process, but you need to check out someone who's going to be in the forefront of your home buying process. Real estate is a relationship game. Don't wait until the last minute to seek these people out. If you know you already have um, to do a to-do list to prepare your finances for purchasing a home, then start building these relationships at that point. Also, you want to start building your relationships with repairmen, plumbers, HVAC, uh, carpenter, <laughs> flooring. You want to start building a relationship with those type of individuals because as you own your home, they will all become your best friends. They'll be your starting lineup. You hear me? <laughs> so that has been all for today. Today, we talked about building your team. If you found this video helpful, if you felt like I dropped some gems and some information that you didn't know when you got here, please, I deserve a like and subscribe from that. And I feel like I deserve a comment. Okay. Next time.